Hello again, I'm Bill Elliott with another installment of Distran Take Two. Last time we talked about how to develop loads in the anchor bolts and to design our anchor bolts. Today we're going to take the next step and we're going to talk about designing the total length of the anchor bolt. Now the first thing we need to do whenever we're talking about designing the total length of the anchor bolt is figure out how much embedment we need. Embedment is how long the anchor bolt needs to stick into the concrete so that whenever the load is applied, it doesn't pull out. Now, a couple of things go into embedment in concrete. One, obviously, is the load on the bolt. Last time we talked about taking that load, turn it into an axial load on our rebar anchor bolt. The second thing that comes into play is the yield stress of the bolt itself. In the transmission industry, we normally use uh, an 18J grade 75 deformed rebar threaded on one end. That's sort of the standard that we go by. It will have a yield stress of 75 KSI. The third item in embedment is the spacing of the anchor bolt. We want to maintain that old standard of 8 thirds times the diameter of the anchor bolt as a minimum spacing. Obviously, if you're using a two and a quarter inch nominal diameter anchor bolt, the spacing is going to be six inches. The last thing that comes in play in the embedment of the anchor bolts is the compressive strength of the concrete around it. Obviously, what we're talking about is the bonding between the steel and the concrete. So we got to, we took into account the strength of the steel. We got to take into account the strength of the concrete. Now. Whenever we do this, we know what our axial load is, our pullout load. Let's just assume it's a 170 kips for this demonstration. So let's get started on our example. We have a load of 170 kips axial. The yield stress of the rebar is 75 KSI. The spacing of a two and a quarter inch rebar will be six inches. The compressive strength of the concrete. Uh, for this example, let's just assume 3,000 PSI. Now you can go to your ASE 48-11. It contains all the formulas that you need to calculate the embedment. ASE 4811 is the standard for transmission structures. So that's where we want to go when we're talking about transmissions to ensure we get the right embedment. If you look, go through those formulas, you get an axial load of 170, 75, 6 inch spacing, 3000 PSI. You're going to get an embedment of 7 feet. So the rebar needs to extend into the concrete 7 feet to ensure that it will not pull out but that is not the total length of the rebar. You gotta have what's called the reveal of the rebar. This is how far the rebar is gonna stick out of the concrete so that the structure can bolt onto it. Now obviously, the reveal is, a big part of the reveal is how thick the base plate is gonna be. But then also you gotta take into account that these structures generally have leveling nuts, so you gotta leave a space for the leveling nut. So you got a space for your leveling, you got your rebar, and then you need to stick out for one or two nuts on top of that. Generally about 12 inches will be uh, enough reveal on your rebar. So we'll have one foot above the concrete, seven feet below. So now we kind of have our length of our anchor bolt, but let's talk about some other things that come into play. You get an eight foot long anchor bolt, two and a quarter inch rebar, they weigh about 14 pounds per foot. So obviously you get at minimum four of these. That's a lot of weight. It's going to be hard to set those if you do not send them to the field in a, with a template in a caged template manner. So whenever you send them, you want to have a top template and a bottom template on these. 
They will hold the anchor bolts in place, make it much easier to set. The bottom template, generally, customer specs will allow you to tack weld on the bottom three inches of the anchor bolt. Sometimes you gotta add a little bit extra onto that. In their specifications, if they ask for that, you gotta take that into account. And then one little trick I like to do is, I always like to keep my compressive strength of my concrete down around 3,000 pounds, 3,000 PSI. What that does is, if your concrete comes back and it doesn't test well, generally, generally the concrete's specced out at uh, 3,500 or 4,000, but if your concrete doesn't test well, then you know you, you at least got enough embedment if the foundation engineer decides that the foundation is good, you know that your embedment will be good. It's just a little factor of safety to keep in there. So, we want to make sure we have enough reveal. We want to calculate our embedment according to ASC 4811. Some of the things we need to take into account, the load, the yield stress, the spacing, the compressive strength of the concrete. Make sure we have a nice template on there so that our anchor bolts are set properly. All right, well, I hope this helped. Thank you for joining Distran Take Two again. See you next time.